In this video, I'm going to tell you about the techniques that a beginner needs to get painted miniatures on the table. It's Fez time. It's that time of the haircut cycle. And so, Fez. In last week's episode, I said these are some of the techniques that beginner modelers, beginner painters, beginner people into the hobby should ignore because they are not for beginners, although you hear about them all the time. Um, they are for, you know, people who are, have been doing stuff for a while, have been painting for a while. Those are the people who should be looking at those things if they're interested. But beginners can disregard those particular techniques. If you want to watch that video, pachow. And in that video, I said, and next week I'll talk about the techniques that, uh, you know, painters, beginners need to get stuff on the table. So here we are. This is all assuming that you've already built your miniature. You've put it together, you've clipped all the little bits, whatever, glued it, you know, that, all that stuff. Um, if you don't know how to do that kind of stuff, I'm going to have to make a separate video about that or just do some searching on YouTube. You'll find other people talking about it, but I'll eventually make a video about that one probably as well. So step one with pretty much any paint job is prime your miniature. Now, um, I generally either use a rattle can or an airbrush, and most beginners are not going to have access to an airbrush, so we're going to deal with a rattle can. Rattle can, spray paint, it's a spray can. Um, generally, you are looking for something that is an actual primer. You don't want to just grab any old spray paint. You generally want to find something that says primer on the can. You generally don't want to find something that says like two times or you know, all in one coat or stuff like that. Those have a tendency to be thicker and you don't want to fill in the details on your miniature, the little fine extra little things. You don't want to fill that in with paint when you're doing your priming. Priming should always be light coats. You want to start out and just do a light coat over your miniature and then you want to let it sit for a little bit and then wait, maybe look at things on your phone. I don't know, watch the YouTube video real quick, something like that, and then do another light coat. And you don't want to do one thick coat because it will clog the little details in your miniature and you don't want that. The other thing that's very important, if this is your miniature and this is your spray can, don't start by going, pointing it directly at the miniature and spray. When you do that very frequently with a lot of different nozzles and a lot of different spray cans, they will splatter a little bit. So if you're pointing it at the model, you're going to be splattering the model with thicker globs of paint, which are going to potentially either at least look weird, if not just fill in a little bit of um, your, your you know detail. So you always want to actually point, not directly at the model, but a little bit to the side of the model, start the spray and drag it across and then let up the spray. So it's kind of like a psh, psh, psh. That will help you to not splatter your model because also if you stop and let go, again, potentially some splatter. So always drag past the model when you're trying to out, you know, outside and you're doing some, uh, some priming or whatever, and you'll have better looking models, especially if you also do multiple thin coats and give it a little bit of time in between each coat. So what color should you prime with? That's kind of an age old question that gets tossed around in a lot of different places quite frequently. Um, here's my opinion. I generally like to prime with a darker color if my model is going to be darker. And if I'm going to have a, a, a model that's going to be lighter, I generally use a lighter color primer. So some people like to use white, some people like to use black, some people like to use gray. It's kind of up to you. The benefit in my mind to using a darker color generally for the priming is twofold. Number one, it any places that I miss in the model then turn into shadows. You know what I mean? So it's like really black or maybe it's kind of dark brown, depending on the primer I'm using. And any spots that I don't catch with paint, like down in the little nooks and crannies in the armpit and places like that, just turn into shadows. Where if I primed the model very well, all white, then any places I miss are not shadows. They're this weird white glowy area in the armpits, which is not good when you have glowing armpits. I just, I'm pretty sure about that. So make sure that you uh, put it on there. And you also want to make sure that you get it into all the nooks and crannies. You want to spray it. Obviously, you've probably set your models down on the table and you're spraying, but you also want to be able to tip them over and try to spray up into the undercuts, into the parts that may not get paint on them when they're coming from above. Watch that stuff as well. You don't just have to use either black or white or gray for your primer as well. There are plenty of colored primers out there and they do have an added benefit. When you use a colored primer, it generally saves you a step because you generally use the color that is going to be the main base coat uh, of your model, which I'll get to in step two. But doing that makes it so you don't really have to do as much of step two because if you are painting 
blood angels who generally have red power armor, you would then spray them potentially with a red primer. And there are a lot of companies out there like the Army Painter and Games Workshop and uh, let's see here, Vallejo. They all have spray primers that come in lots and lots of different colors. Sometimes you can find stuff at the automotive store that will work. It's still a primer, but it's still a color that you can use and you might be able to find it for even way cheaper than sometimes some of those other hobby brand sprays. But it's important to understand that if you do that, you then have to make sure to cover it all up in all the little spots and little nooks and crannies sometimes because otherwise, again, if you're a space marine and I miss a spot, now you have this weird red spot that's maybe not supposed to be there. So take a look at that. Step two. Now this is base coloring your model. What you should do is take a look at the model and figure out what's the biggest color block on the model. If it's a barbarian, they're probably mostly naked, shirtless, wearing, you know, no pants, just got a loincloth or whatever. So therefore, whatever the flesh tone is you're going to paint that model, that's your base color. If it is an evil wizard in a big flowing robe, what color is the robe? Purple? Cool. Then purple is your base color. If it is a space marine um, that is blue, then blue is your base color. If you're a skeleton, you know, that you're painting, eh, well, what color is the skeleton's Skeleton, I guess. It's skeleton color. So, you know, again, that's your base color. Figuring that out and deciding really helps you because in the previous step, you could potentially use that color as your primer. But if you don't, then you are going to start painting that color over the top of your primer. And you're going to be not crazy careful. If it gets on some spots like adjacent, you know, if you color outside the lines a little bit, that's okay because you're going to paint those parts later on. So, Cover everything up with your base color that's supposed to be that base color. With these guys, it's the red, uh, you know, cloak for the most part. And so that's why I painted this guy all, you know, red over the black. And this guy, I actually just primed red to start with. And then, you know, he'll, he'll be in the next step. Doing this will help you to kind of analyze the model a little bit and look at it and go, okay, so what am I doing here? And understand, take a look, make sure you understand what's the dominant color and then Put that on and put it on thin coats, maybe two. Sometimes you have to cover, you know, especially if it's a real dark color like black and you're trying to cover it with something like red, you might have to put on a second coat because, you know, it might not cover completely in the first coat. But maybe you want it to look splotchy because chaos cultist, whatever. Figure out what you want it to do and get it ready to go and then let it completely dry. Now is the time in which you are going to put wash onto that base color that you painted before. And a little note is that wash will darken down things a little bit. So potentially, if you look at this color and you're like, this is the absolute perfect color, I love it, it might actually end up ending being a little dark once you put wash all over it in this phase. So you might have actually wanted to use a slightly lighter color in the first phase, or the previous phase, this phase two. It's a possibility. It depends. It usually doesn't matter that much. And in the next phase, we're going to actually lighten things up again. But anyway, once your base color in step two is totally dry, then you take some wash and you can use wash from all kinds of different companies out there like um, well, Army Painter makes good washes, Games Workshop makes good washes, and pick a color that kind of works with your base color that you're covering up. So the, uh, these guys are red, right? This is a red dude. And so red is a warm color, so I'm going to use brown for two reasons. Number one, because brown is a warm color and red's a warm color, so they'll sort of tie together a little bit. But on the other hand, also, brown is kind of dirt. So I want this guy to look a little grungy. And what you do is you literally just slop it on. You put it on good and thick. And when you do that, it will get into all the crevices and the recesses. If you get a puddle where it goes too thick and you're like, well, I don't want that to happen, you just take your brush, wipe it off on a piece of paper towel so it's basically dry, and then you just sort of suck it up again. You just poke it into that puddle and it will suck up into the brush. And then you can either redistribute it someplace else on the model or you can just you know wipe it off on your paper towel. But do that. Get it so that it looks nice and it's in all the different little nooks and crannies. And again, if it gets on the other stuff that's not your base color, that's okay. And then let it dry. And washes will take a good long time to dry. So make sure that it's completely dry before we go to step four. Now we're going to dry brush. And what this is going to do is the dry brush is, now that we've darkened everything down a little bit, that base color originally, we darkened it down. We are now going to hit all the raised parts and bring them back to our base main color so that the color that we used originally when we first painted over the primer and or if we used a you know a primer color we're going to find a color that matches that primer color but anyway you get that color and you just dab it onto your makeup brush i did a whole video about makeup brushes i would strongly suggest you watch it because it will save you tons and tons of time pachow dab it onto that makeup brush 
and just start going to town on that model. And as you brush that stuff onto those base colors, it will get on other parts that you don't want it to. But that's okay because we're going to be painting those next and they'll all get covered up. In this situation, we are being a little bit more free with our dry brushing because we know it'll get onto other spots and stuff like that and they'll get painted over later. It's fine. So do this because then at this point, after this is done, a majority of your painting job is going to be done on this model because we picked the dominant color and now we are basically done and we have put down the base color, we've washed it to bring down the shade, and then we've also highlighted it to bring back up the highlights and the high parts. So we've done a big portion of the model in basically three steps, paint, wash, dry brush, and now we can go on and do the rest of the stuff. So how many more of these uh, steps are there, Uncle Adam? I'm sure you're asking when you say go and do the rest of the stuff. Well, honestly, all the rest of the things we're going to do to this model are all just variations of um, steps two and three, meaning the base coat painting and the wash. So what you've done now after everything is dried in your big main dominant base color is now you go through and you paint the other stuff. Generally start with skin. So find a skin tone you like. And the reason you start with skin is because it's the lowest part of the model. It's, you know, if I'm wearing an uh, armband, it's easier to paint the skin and then paint the armband. If I paint the armband, when I paint the skin, I might get skin on the armband because it's raised and my, my brush could tap it. Whereas when you're painting a lower surface, it's less likely that you're going to hit the top surface, but not the other way around. It's, I did a video about painting inside out, Pushow, and you should probably check that one out as well. But paint the skin and then maybe paint... Um, in this guy's case, I've got like arm wraps and I've got boots and I've got belts and I've got a gun and all kinds of different things and getting these guys to the point where all of the different parts are now covered with paint. You shouldn't see any primer anymore. That's really what this next step is. After you've done this three part process on that first big dominant color where you threw down the color and then you threw down a wash, and then you did the dry brush. Now you're going through and just doing step two over and over and over again on all the different parts of the model to basically block out the colors and just get them nailed down. Don't worry about highlights. Don't worry about anything. Just cover the parts so you no longer see any primer or very little primer. At that point, you then go through and start putting wash on those parts, which is, again, step three. I'm looking at my notes. And then sometimes you might want to put certain colors of wash in certain areas and certain other ones right close to them. And if they mix a little bit in the middle, it's okay. But think about the colors. Think about what the wash will do to the color that you put in there and then just cover it up. And that's literally it, you know? That's, that's a finished model at a beginner level. And it will still look really pretty good because there will be shadow and they'll even be in some spots, the dominant color on the model, highlight. Now, you don't have to go through and highlight every last little bit and things like that. I'll probably talk about that in a future video when I start talking about a little bit more advanced beginner kind of techniques. Um, taking this same model and going, okay, cool, I got to this point. What can I do now to bring it ahead? But this model is totally fieldable on the table and it will look good, especially if you're playing an army game and there's a whole bunch of them. But even in a skirmish situation, this is a decent looking model. You're, you're, you're pretty far ahead already. And all you had to do was kind of stay in the lines, really not in the beginning part, more in the second part. You had to be able to put wash on there and be able to maybe make sure you don't get too many big puddles and things like that. And um, you had to be able to dry brush, but only on that one main dominant section. You don't have to dry brush on the rest of the areas. You can, again, that's getting into advanced beginner, but this will get you to the point where you can find uh, really good looking models just right there in front of you by sitting down and using these simple techniques. You don't have to think about non-metallic metals. You don't have to think about uh, wet blending. You don't have to think, just, just do it this way and get stuff good and build up your skills with your hands because really brush skill is the important part to get better at and confidence. Confidence in your abilities is actually a super important thing to build as you're getting into painting miniatures. So with these two guys, you can kind of see the difference here. Well, maybe you can see the difference here. Um, what kind of, you know, one was, was primed red, one was primed black. That thing is a choice, depending on whether you want to prime something real dark or whether you want to prime something in a base color. It's kind of up to you. Um, you know, you can see by the base at this point, maybe how each one looks in the final. I think they match pretty well, honestly. So it's really up to you. Priming in the color saves you a step, but sometimes priming dark 
helps you to keep those shadows a little bit deeper and maybe bring out a little bit more contrast. At least that's my personal preference. So that's the only thing that I think that maybe you need to think about when you're going to sit down and do this. Figure out whether I want to just go dark or whether I want to go with a color, you know, and it depends on the models. Obviously, if you're painting skeletons, I would tell you to try to find a tan spray paint uh, primer and start there because, again, you're already going to be ahead of the game. You throw some wash on it, do a little bit of dry brush, boom, skeleton's basically done except for the sword and the shield and skeleton pants, whatever else that might be wearing, you know, one boot. Doing these things can help you to get better models on the table quicker. So if, um, if you learned anything from this or, you know, I hope it helps out. If you didn't learn anything because you're already a pro painter, but you got friends who are wondering about this, share this video with them because I think it can take people from, I'm just not sure if I know how to paint or I don't know what I'm doing to, oh yeah, I can get models done pretty quickly.